Set within a semi-tropical rainforest valley, surrounded by volcanic peaks, powered by red arc, welcome to Kappa Trailer of the Year 2020. The Mars Endurance Ford Fold is absolutely jammed with standard features. You can see some of them on display behind me. It's beautifully finished, it's conveniently customizable, it's fully capable off-road, and all for a price that will make you jump for joy. The slide-out kitchen in the Mars Endurance is something else. You've got this four burner stove top, a separate sink and basin area, and this amazing splashback. There's room for cookware to help you make a slap up gourmet meal. In here we have got this clearly marked up, easy to use control panel. Over here you've got your slide out for your fridge freezer. And then you've got these handily positioned cavernous storage lockers. Inside, the Mars Endurance is as spacious as campers get. You've got a queen size bed at the front, another queen size bed at the back, loads of headroom and a massive dinette. Let's see what the judges made of it. The Mars Endurance to me was a feature laden camper for a minuscule price. David, did you think the same? Yeah, Mars is a, a company that's building their business on a lot of camper for a minimal outlay. It's a camper that's designed for families, but it's adaptable to couples. You can have it without that back bed, so it only uh, sleeps two. I thought it was a very good camper. And Kath, were you impressed at the price point of the Mars Endurance? Yeah, I, I like this camper. It's one of those units that you could see a family of four just really enjoying. There's USB ports, there's TVs, that extension bench unit. It was a great feature when you've got a few kids around, put the food out the back, get the hungry hordes out of the way and just crack on. I, I really liked it. For $21,990, it's not a lot of money, but they've done a few things to it when it first arrives, which I think add a lot of value. So they added an ARK jockey wheel. They changed to either Timken or SKF bearings, and they go through and they check all the automotive grade seals. And yes, it's an import, but these are little things that make it a little bit more robust and still at only 22 grand, it's good value. And uh, what about the quality of finish, Scott? That two-pack finish just made that thing shine. The, the gloss was immaculate. All the basics for off-road ability are right there in one package, which is good for a small family trailer. And what about taking it off-road for an extended period of time? Do you think it has enough features to help you live a comfortable camp life? There's plenty of storage outside. It's got the roof rack. You'll be towing it with a reasonably capable vehicle. So yes, it has the capacity. It's just a matter of adapting your camping style to the style of the camper. Climbing underneath the Mars, we measure the chassis at 50 by 100, and she's a fully galv one. Yeah, underneath doesn't look too bad for the price. The last few days have been really hot. Um, has it been a pleasant and breezy sort of camper to sort of spend time in? It's certainly breezy. There's certainly plenty of open space in there to let the ventilation through. And what about the kitchen setup and all that outdoor living aspects of it, David? The kitchen was big. It had that lovely big extension. Uh, gave a great bench space, somewhere to prepare your food, prepare a meal, put a pot down. And that's really important around a kitchen. That's a camper that's obviously got families in mind. One thing I liked was the control panel. If you noticed, it had the big fat buttons for big fat fingers, but it also had a pictorial representation of what those buttons were for. So if you've got a kid that's trying to work out what light is where and what to switch, it's all there for them. The thing that I really liked was making it more about family. You could quite easily see in regards to the schematic around the lighting panel or about the split pantry that was accessible by small hands and even having that dedicated space in a fold-out camper for children to sleep in rather than when mum and dad hop out of the main bed you've got to step over the children in the morning when you're getting up. It does have a few little features and one that really stood out to me which I thought was really clever is the fixed waste water system. So it's plumbed from the kitchen through to the far side of the camper and down and there is no fiddling around trying to connect a hose there, it's just connected on the other side of the camper and you're done. Forward pole campers are extremely popular, there's a lot of them around. This is about what you get for your money and how much of that theme costs. And the flexibility they give you in the choice of having that back bed or not having the back bed. You can have several different types of steps to go in and out, you can have wide steps, you can have narrow steps. There were a number of flexible options I think that will allow you to adapt this to just what you want. I like dual tanks. Two tanks of water, so therefore you've got redundancy. It didn't have an isolating switch in between, but you could fix that yourself quite easily. But having redundancy in water as remote area operators is a must in, in my book. But so by having twin water tanks, that's a, a good tick for me. And on self-sufficiency, we also had a 1000 watt pure sign inverter, and we had twin AGM batteries at 100 amp hour each. So bring a solar blanket along, and you've got a few days there at least to keep the twin fridges running. Okay, there we have it, the Mars Endurance. Everything a family needs for a really small price.